All right, your uh, LT2 video um, is solve a linear equation. Um, you have done a bunch of these before, um, but just to kind of review and then kind of step it up a little bit harder, uh, maybe from what you've done in the past. Um, you have space on your note sheet for all of these steps. Um, you don't have a ton of space there, so you don't necessarily have to write down the example if you don't want, um, but I will go through and uh, explain it. Um, so step one, write down, for sure write down, eliminate parentheses, distribute. If your equation has parentheses in it, um, then we use the distributive property, um, we talked about that in uh, simplifying a little bit, to get rid of them. Um, and so you see in the example that leaves us with 3x plus 12, that's step one. Step two, so your next little little box there at the top. Um, I'm changing that to combine like terms um, instead of just add them because the word add gets confusing. It's not always addition. Um, but combine like terms on both sides. So in this example, we have a 2x and a 3x on this side. Those combine to make 5x, um, which gives us 5x plus 4 on this side. So we've combined all the uh, like terms. Like terms are just anything that um, are similar. So x's go with x's, constant numbers go with constant numbers. Those are like terms. Step three is make sure that the variable is only on one side. Um, so right here we have, a, we have a 6x right here, and then we have a 2x over here. Um, we want the variable to only be on one side. So part of solving the equation is getting the variable on just one side. So we'll subtract 6x from both sides. That leaves us with 4 equals negative 4x. And the variable is now only on the right side. Step 4 is eliminate the constant term. Um, in this example, th this will either be done by adding or subtracting, whatever the opposite of what you have is. So right here we have a plus 7. So the way we're going to get rid of that constant is to minus 7 from both sides. Step 5 is eliminate the coefficient of x. Um, coefficient of x is whatever number is multiplied by x. So in this case it's we have 3x. Um, and so since we have 3x here, uh, we are going to divide by 3. That's the opposite of multiply. So it's just the opposite of whatever you have again. Um, so dividing by 3x on both sides gives us x equals 4. And that is um, all you have to do to solve an equation. So we're going to go, and I know I went through that quickly. If you need to go back, that's why this video is nice. Um, if you need to go back and look at any of those again, or listen to it again, or just write it down, whatever, you can do that. Uh, here is your first example. Um, we are going to first, and I have the justification over here, you don't have to write this down. Um, this is just so that you know I'm not like cheating or using any non-rules or whatever. First one is addition property of equality. So I'm going to get rid of this 6 here, this minus 6, by adding 6 to both sides. That gives me 5x equals negative 6x plus 22. Next I'm going to use the addition property of equality again. I'm going to add 6x to both sides. Gives me 11x over here. These all cancel out and I have 22 over here. And my last step is I'm going to use division. I'm going to divide by the coefficient of x which is 11 and get x equals 22 divided by 11 is 2. So my answer is x equals 2. Next example. First, I'm going to use the distributive property to get rid of these parentheses. Um, if you're kind of a visual person, you can draw in the rainbows. You don't have to, though. 4x, uh, this is minus 8x. And then 
carry with it the minus, so this is going to be a minus 8 equals 8. Oh, I forgot an X. So then I'm going to um, combine like terms. So on this side I have a couple like terms, 4X and uh, negative 8X. That gives me negative 4X minus 8 equals 8. Then I'm going to use addition property of equality, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Get negative 4x equals 16. And then last step, division, so I'm going to divide by the coefficient of x. And get x equals negative 4. Okay? So again, um, if you need to go back and rewatch or pause partway through, whatever you need to do um, in order to fully grasp that. The next one, um, I'm going to, I want to get rid of this minus 3 first, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That gives me x over 3 equals 18. Um, you can think of this one of two ways. You can either think of it as one-third times x, um, or you can think of it as x divided by 3. Um, if you think of it that way, I think it's a little bit easier. To get rid of this over 3, we just multiply both sides by 3. It gives me x right there, and 18 times 3 is 54. So I get x equals 54. And then, I think this is your last one. Um, we want to get rid of the 4 first. So we subtract 4 from both sides. 2 fifths x equals 8. Okay, now this is a little bit tricky. Um, we have uh, 2 fifths times x. And so if you remember from some of the simpler examples, um, like right here, we divided by whatever the coefficient of x was. So we had a negative 4 in front of x, so I divided by negative 4 on both sides. Okay, think of it the same way with this one. I have a 2 fifths in front of x. Whoops. I have a 2 fifths in front of x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 fifths. Dividing by whatever the coefficient is makes that coefficient go away. So now you just have x over there equals 8 divided by 2 fifths. Now this is where you kind of have to do some stuff with fractions, um, even though I know fractions are hard. Um, but what you really have here is an 8 over 1 divided by 2 over 5. So if you remember how to divide fractions, you're going to take the division sign and you're going to turn it into multiplication and you're going to take this second fraction and flip it upside down. Then you multiply straight across on the top and on the bottom and you get x equals 8 times 5 is 40 over 1 times 2 is 2. Then that can be simplified because 40 divided by 2 is 20 so we get x equals 20. Okay. Same steps as before, the only thing that makes it a little bit more challenging is that instead of just dividing by something simple like 4, you're dividing by 2 fifths. There are a couple special cases, and you saw one of them on the pretest, um, and you probably just left a blank or put a question mark or got mad at me and said it was a trick question or something. Um, but there are two special cases here, so I'm just going to go through the steps like we just talked about. And I'm going to simplify this and I'm going to do 8 minus 5 is 3 and over here I have 2x plus 3. Okay, pause for a second. And what you'll notice is on this side we have the same exact thing as on the left side. Okay, that's what makes this a special case. When you get a situation like this, the answer to this is that there are infinite solutions. 
What that means is I can put in any number in the entire world for x. And if I put that number in right here for x and right here for x, these two sides will always be equal. Okay? You won't get like a 5 over here and a 20 over here because they're the exact same thing. So I could put in a 3 for x, and these two sides would be equal. I could put in a 4 for x and x, and those two sides would be equal. I could put in a 3,708 for x, and those two sides would still be equal. Okay, So there are infinite solutions. Over here, this is like the one that you had on your pretest. So first I'm combining like terms, and I get 4m minus m is 3m plus 1 equals 3m plus 9. Then you'll notice it's kind of like this. There's a 3m on both sides, but there's a kind of a problem because you have a plus 1 on this side and a plus 9 on this side. So what that means is that in this case, you could try putting in different values for m. You could try 1 or 50 or 3. As long as you put in the same thing on both sides, if I put in a 1 for m, I'm going to get 1 equals 9. And that's not true. Okay, If, if you take it a step further um, and subtract 3m from both sides, you'll, you'll end up with 1 equals 9. And 1 doesn't equal 9. 1 equals 1. So because of that, that means there is absolutely no number that you can put in for m that will make these two sides equal. Okay, So that means for this type of thing, the answer is that there are no solutions. Okay, And this kind of thing comes up every once in a while. It's kind of rare, um, but it does come up every once in a while. So it's a good thing to, uh, to be aware of. Before class, here is how um, the... Uh, the before class uh, assignments um, will go. And, and you saw this in your other video, I guess, too. Uh, but here's how this one's going to work. Um, you're going to write any equation that you want down here. Um, and you are going to have someone else in the class solve it. And we'll, go, we'll facilitate that in class. So for now, um, what you need to do is you need to write your equation. Um, and then you need to... Uh, have a solution as well because then you're going to tell them your equation and uh, they're going to have to solve it. So you can include fractions, you can include decimals, um, you can try to make a special case if you want. Uh, the only thing I ask is don't do um, something really really simple like 2x equals 4, okay? Because that's too easy and that's not going to help anybody learn, okay? So try to come up with something kind of complicated, but not super impossible.